Whether they simply left Jaws smashing off the floor on the back of one particularly electric exchange or scene, or routinely left the audience chuckling, tearing up, or fist pumping throughout their supporting turns, the end result was still the same. Just about every soul alive walked out of each of the following movies with one actor at the forefront of their minds. But it sure as hell wasn't the one in the middle of the poster. Gareth here from WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 more supporting actors who totally stole the movie. Number 10, Robin Williams' Good Will Hunting. Robin Williams always displayed an ability to imbue emotional depth into his many hilarious characters. And whenever he was given the freedom to explore some more dramatic waters, the Aladdin, Mrs. Doubtfire and Flubber star always seemed to smash it out of the park. However, when it comes to the finest display on the late great star's impressive CV, few would argue with Goodwill Hunting sitting as his all-round greatest. In what would ultimately become an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor winning display from the always moving comedy genius, Williams' work as therapist Dr. Sean McGuire had audiences reaching for a tissue one minute and howling with unfiltered laughter the next. But arguably the moment that cemented Williams' turn as an all-timer came during his park bench sit-down with Matt Damon's arrogant titular Will Hunting, a scene so powerful and affecting that you can literally hear the Academy scribbling his name onto the winner's card mid-monologue. Will Hunting's name may be in the title, and Damon's central figure does drive much of the story, but there was only one true MVP of this 1997 drama. Number 9, Sean William Scott, American Pie. From the very first moment Sean William Scott's Steve Stifler strutted onto the scene during 1999's American Pie, it was abundantly clear who the real star of this particular show was gonna be. Jim Levenstein was technically positioned as the smash hit teen comedy's leading light, as he and the rest of his pals all awkwardly attempted to lose their virginities before the end of high school. But the film is undeniably always at its most enjoyable whenever William Scott's harsh, loudmouth, sex-obsessed Stifler is front and center. Whether he's spurting out instantly iconic one-liners, constantly referring to himself as the Stiffmeister, or hilariously stumbling into a scenario involving his mum getting it on with Finch, William Scott could always be relied on to leave audiences in stitches during this outrageous first slice of pie, and he'd only go on to repeatedly steal the show in subsequent outings too, air banging cars and literally taking centre stage in a dance off for the ages during the years that would follow. Simply put, had it not been for William Scott's relentlessly charming bursts of madness, then there's a solid chance American Pie would have never been the consistent and profitable riot it ended up being. Number 8, Evan Peters, X-Men Days of Future Past. It takes a special performance and actor to stand out in a flick boasting not just the star-studded cast of the prequel series of X-Men flicks, but the OG collection of iconic cinematic mutants. And in Evan Peters' utterly joyous showing in X-Men Days of Future Past, you had precisely that and then some. Popping up in a number of the best scenes the epic multi-generational mutant outing had to offer, the star's Quicksilver made quite the impact during his brief time on screen. On top of a fun exchange involving Peter Maximoff conversing with the Wolverine Charles Xavier and Hank McCoy in his mom's basement, all whilst darting between ping pong and video games, the silver-haired legend's part in helping Magneto escape the Pentagon is up there with the finest superhero scenes of all time. With time brilliantly and magnificently slowed down as Quicksilver dashes around a kitchen and diffuses the perilous situation, Peter's charm and hilarious indifference effortlessly exudes out of every pore, and his marvellous performance in general soon became the one most people simply couldn't get enough of, heading out of the well-received feature. So Oh, it's just a shame that Peter's shining work in Days of Future Past was followed up with a few rather forgettable showings in the subsequent sequels slash prequels. It was fun while it lasted. Number 7, Winston Duke, Black Panther. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that the late, great Chadwick Boseman didn't absolutely boss it as the titular Black Panther during his first solo outing in the MCU, but fans were fully aware that another piece of special work from the Civil War star was likely heading their way after already witnessing T'Challa hold his own with the likes of Captain America and Iron Man. What came as a little more of a surprise was just how much of the spotlight was stolen by the figure Boseman's King of Wakanda dueled with early in that first Black Panther flick back in 2018, unleashing a character who could effectively deliver priceless moments of hilarity one moment and leave you quivering in your boots the next. Winston Duke's scene-stealing debut appearance as M'Baku had fans barking out of theatres the world over. Ho, ho. Very few walked into this game-changer of a feature expecting to fall in love with the rival king of the central hero. But by the time the credits rolled, folks were left with no choice but to celebrate a surprisingly compassionate, unexpected star of the show who could also be counted on for a quick laugh and to gloriously kick all of the ass. Number 6, Chloe Grace Moretz, Kick-Ass 
The casting of a 12-year-old Chloe Grace Moretz in the ridiculously violent role of Hit Girl in 2010's Kick-Ass was definitely seen as a controversial move at the time. But even with the sight of a youngster unleashing C-words and all manner of gruesome hell on the sorry souls who dare to get in her way being seen as inappropriate by some, that still couldn't stop the child star from becoming the name on everyone's lips heading out of the comic book adaptation. Commanding the screen during every single second she occupied it throughout the Aaron Taylor Johnson starring black comedy, Grace Marex exuded undeniable star power when comfortably slicing her way through henchmen twice her size, and sweetly sharing the screen with the mighty Nicolas Cage as Big Daddy. And when discussing the moments that helped immortalize Kick-Ass as one of the most compelling flicks the 2010s had to offer, it's often the sequences involving the purple-haired vigilante whooping ass and Grace Moret's delivery of countless brilliant one-liners that spring to mind more than anything else. Number 5. Viola Davis Air when Matt Damon and Ben Affleck decided to tell the story of how Nike went about convincing Michael Jordan to sign with the brand, a strategy that would ultimately see the creation of the legendary Air Jordan shoe, the icon himself had two specific requests. The first being that he wanted longtime Nike vice president Howard White to be included in the picture, and the second that his mother could only be played by the greatest actor working today, Viola Davis. And upon witnessing the Academy Award winner's work in the Affleck-directed Air, it's not hard to see why Jordan was so determined to see Davis bring his own mom to life on the big screen. Despite being on screen nowhere near as much as Affleck and Damon's Phil Knight and Sonny Vaccaro respectively, Davis dominates absolutely every moment she's present, confidently and mesmerizingly protecting her son as she plays ball with the suits trying to capitalize on her baby boy's gift. It's not an explosive turn by any means, but Davis's quiet, unwavering, and effortlessly powerful showing as Dolores Jordan still finds itself at the center of the moments when air truly soars. Number 4. Tom Cruise, Tropic Thunder Robert Downey Jr. notably managed to score himself a Best Supporting Actor nod at the Academy Awards for his side-splitting work as Kirk Lazarus in 2008's action comedy satire Tropic Thunder. But in truth, even his routine scene-stealing ultimately ended up being overshadowed by the unexpected gift that was one Les Grossman. Donning a bald cap, fat suit, and an energy unlike anything we'd ever seen from the A-list sensation before, many had next to no idea Tom Cruise had been erupting on their screens throughout the chaotic flick until the end credits strutted on to the scene. Whether he was sending folks home with a grin on their mugs via his hip-thrusting moves, or viciously belittling all who unfortunately sat on the other end of a video or voice call, Cruz's piercing barbs and joyous explosions consistently dragged all of the attention away from the rest of his rather talented castmates. It also won't come as too much of a surprise to hear that Cruz has been fixated on returning to this magnificently outrageous role in the years since his Tropic Thunder debut. So expect more scenes and movies to be entirely stolen by this Diet Coke sipping ball of fuel sooner rather than later. Number 3. Christoph Waltz in Glorious Bastards The majority of the people around the globe were first really introduced to the entrancing Christoph Waltz during the opening scene of Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards. And as far as introductions go, do they honestly get any better? From minute one, Waltz's smooth talking and natural charm as SS officer Hans Lander produced a feeling of unease and palpable tension that few actors have ever replicated with such despicable ease. That all-timer of an opening stretch was merely the beginning of the Austrian powerhouse's mission to walk out of QT's latest masterpiece as the undisputed star of the show, however. From there, Waltz proceeded to strike fear into the hearts of both audience members, and whichever poor soul sat opposite him chowing down on a dessert or nervously sipping on a drink. An Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor felt pretty inevitable after his iconic first scene in Tarantino Land. But his fearsome and often disarming performance throughout the remainder of the 2009 war flick quickly cemented him as one of the most in-demand talents in the business. And it also ensured he confidently stole the spotlight from the likes of Brad Pitt and Melanie Laurent. Number 2. Donnie Yen, John Wick Chapter 4 With the series helping to breathe new life into the timeless Keanu Reeves career over the last decade, few will deny that the John Wick franchise likely wouldn't have taken off in the way it ultimately did without the thoughtful and relentlessly cool leading man front and center. However, without a constant stream of colorful and deeply charismatic supporting figures to accompany him in his quest to kick all of the ass, gain revenge, and somehow stay alive when the world of assassins is closing in, Wick's adventures and missions would definitely be nowhere near as 
captivating. And simply acting as the latest person from John's past to pop up and steal the whole damn show was Donnie Yen's blind high table assassin Kane in Chapter 4. Yen finds a way to force you to root for the person who is trying to bring down our favourite lad by masterfully carrying his all-important motivation throughout, keeping his daughter from being murdered by the Marquis, and perfectly executing everything from hilarious one-liners to mind-boggling feats of action. It's a performance that persistently rivals and often eclipses Reeves's in terms of coolness, but one that is also rooted in respect for his fellow assassin and a need to protect his family. Vin Diesel would be proud. Number 1. Andy Serkis, The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey On the back of completely changing the game with his transformative motion capture displays in Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings trilogy, Andy Serkis was called back to the Middle Earth that put him on the map when that same legendary New Zealander decided to dive into J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit story. And along with serving as the prequel trilogy's second unit director, the Brits also made one hell of an impact as they return in Gollum during an unexpected journey, with the one-time Hobbit involved in arguably the trilogy's best scene with Martin Freeman's Bilbo Baggins. During the pair's game of riddles, you simply cannot take your eyes off of Circus's beautifully computer-generated work as the tortured soul, flitting between his more menacing Gollum persona and the innocent Smeagol like the part had never left him. The actor's ability to leave you genuinely sympathizing with the ring-addicted creature one moment and praying he doesn't bite a chunk out of the central figure the next is simply hypnotic. In all honesty, things mostly went downhill for the Hobbit flicks on the back of Circus's brief movie-stealing turn as the complex corrupted figure, with most longing for another game of riddles rather than the countless poorly crafted CGI action sequences that were unleashed in the subsequent entries. It's not far! And that's our list. Know any other supporting actors who totally stole the movie? Let us know all about them in the comments section right down below. And do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're down there. Also, if you're into this sort of supporting stuff, then please head on over to whatculture.com and find some more fantastic articles just like the one this video you're watching right this second is based on. I've been the show stealing Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you as always for watching this video today. Hopefully, I'll see your process faces rather soon. But in the meantime, be good to yourself. Bye bye.